This episode of the Children's Literature Podcast is brought to you by a good deed. A good deed. Whether you give one or receive one, try to be part of one every day. Welcome to the Children's Literature Podcast. I'm your host, T.Q. Townsend. This episode is about the elves and the shoemaker. At Christmas time, it's fun to retell the famous stories we all know. A Christmas Carol, The Nutcracker, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. But I also like to look out for lesser-known stories with a Christmas connection. One of my favorites is The Elves and the Shoemaker, a story first collected by the Brothers Grimm with the German title Die Wichtelmänner, which translates most closely to The Elf Men. This is a story I've known since I was very little, and my favorite retelling is by Freya Littledale, with illustrations by Brinton Turkle. I have a very old and very worn-out paperback of their work that I read when I was a kid, and my kids enjoy it today. In Germanic and Norse legend, elves, gnomes, and dwarves are best thought of as different types of fairies. Some are kindly and helpful, and some cause a lot of trouble. They're famous for their crafting skills. You can see this in the story of Snow White, where the dwarves are able to mine and shape precious jewels. The dwarves in Tolkien's world of Middle-earth are also renowned as great craftsmen and miners. While none of these characters are human, they often take interest in humans, helping those who are deserving. Here's my retelling of The Elves and the Shoemaker. As always, when I do a translation, I've tried to keep it as close as possible to the original language and meaning of the story. There was once a shoemaker who had become very poor. He was honest and hardworking, but through no fault of his own, he finally found himself with nothing left but a scrap of leather that could only be used to make a single pair of shoes. He cut out the leather in the evening so that it would be ready to put together in the morning. Although his heart was heavy, his conscience was clear about the way he had lived his life. The shoemaker went to bed in silence. He whispered his prayers and managed to fall asleep. When the shoemaker arose in the morning, he said his prayers again and came down to his workshop. But to his astonishment, the pair of shoes sat on the table. They were finely finished and the shoemaker was speechless with shock. In disbelief, he lifted the shoes to examine them. They were so fine. Not a single stitch was out of place. The shoes were made with the finest craftsmanship. At that moment, a customer entered the shop. He was so impressed with the shoes that he gave a generous tip when he paid for them. The shoemaker now had enough money to buy leather for two pairs of shoes. He spent the afternoon cutting out the leather and laid out the pieces in the evening as usual. In the morning, he rose with rekindled courage. He went downstairs, eager to get to work. But once again, he was astonished to see the two finished pairs sitting gleaming on the table. Soon enough, Customers came into the shop and snapped up the shoes, so pleased with the workmanship that they also gave a generous tip when they paid. The shoemaker counted his coins and saw that he had enough to buy leather for four pairs of shoes. Once again, he cut out the leather, and once again, the shoes were finished when he came downstairs early in the morning. This went on for some time and the shoemaker cheerfully worked at his trade with help from his invisible friends until he became a wealthy man. One evening, not long before Christmas, the shoemaker sat thinking before he went to bed. He turned to his wife and said, Why don't we stay up tonight to try to discover who our helping hands belong to? 
His wife happily agreed and she lit a candle. The couple went downstairs and carefully hid in a corner of the room behind where the coats were hung up. At midnight, two adorable tiny men came in. They had not a stitch of clothing on, but they seemed not to mind if they sat down at the work table. They lifted the leather pieces and began to prick, stitch, and tap with movements so nimble and quick that the shoemaker could not believe his eyes. The elves didn't stop until all the work was finished and the shoes were neatly lined up on the table. Then they vanished as quickly as they had come. The shoemaker and his wife were so astonished that all they could do was go silently back to bed. But at breakfast the next morning, the woman said, Those little elves have made us rich, and we should show our gratitude to them. They have nothing to wear at all. They must be freezing. Do you know what I will do? I will sew shirts, kilts, doublets, and trousers for them. I'll also make stockings for them. Can you make each of them a little pair of shoes? Her husband replied, I'd be delighted to do that. The two worked hard all day, and in the evening everything was finished. They laid out the presents on the work table instead of the usual pieces of cut leather. Then they hid themselves so they could see how their gifts would be received. At midnight, the elves arrived, ready to get to work. But then they saw that the table held fine new clothing instead of newly cut leather. At first the elves were surprised, but this quickly turned to delight. They put on their new outfits right away. Then, admiring their beautiful clothes, they sang out, See us dressed up so nicely, no more will we cobblers be. And then they skipped and danced and jumped all over the work table. And then they danced right out the door. The little elves never returned, but that was all right, as the shoemaker was now comfortable enough to last him a lifetime, and he was successful for all his days. I really like this story for a lot of reasons. Unlike a lot of fairy tales which focus on royalty, it's about an ordinary person who's just trying to get by. That already makes it a lot more relatable, even hundreds of years after it was written down. I also think it's interesting that the story makes it clear that the shoemaker's struggles are not of his own making. The original German text is very specific. It says, Ohne seine Schuld so arm geworden, which means he became poor due to no fault of his own. On the night when the shoemaker cuts out his last pair of shoes and resigns himself to his fate, the story also says that he had ein gutes Gewissen, or a clear conscience. From this, the reader is meant to understand that this is just a hard-working guy who's had some rotten luck. Maybe the price of leather shot up. Maybe some cheap foreign-made imports have flooded the market. Maybe inflation has led to a generally higher cost of living. Maybe health care is unaffordable, and he's had to help out relatives beyond what he expected. It's easy to relate to his situation, because any normal person can imagine, or has experienced, a situation where no matter how honestly you work, you just can't seem to make ends meet. Unfortunately, economic hardship is timeless. This is a key part of the story. The shoemaker isn't anyone amazing or special. He's just a decent, hard-working, ordinary guy who could really use a break. And that's something people will relate to, no matter what time or culture they come from. Some days, each of us will feel like we've been swept out to sea, barely treading water and knowing that one more big wave will sink us for good. In these moments... It's easy to wish for some magic little elves to pull us back into a boat. After that, none of us would mind rowing ourselves back to shore. We'd only be too grateful for the boat and the oars. That's another key part of the story. The shoemaker never stops working through the tale, even after he starts getting magical help. He does what he can, buying and cutting out the leather. And as his wealth increases, 
so does his workload. He's not lazy or an ungrateful recipient of the elves' generosity, and once he's in a position to help others, he does. When the shoemaker's wife suggests that they make fine clothing to thank the little elves for their good deeds, the shoemaker eagerly replies, Das bin ich voll zufrieden, or that sounds great to me. He's not just grateful for the help he's received. He's eager to help in return as soon as he's in a position to do so. I also really like that the shoemaker and his wife are fine with the fact that the elves don't come back anymore after being given their new clothes. Because the extra boost wasn't needed anymore. The ability to make the gift of clothing was proof of that. If the elves had stayed on with the shoemaker after he was back on his feet, it would have deprived him of the chance to take care of himself and experience the joy of showing generosity to others. Also, perhaps now the elves can move on to another worthy recipient of their kindness. It's an ideal tale of how charity is meant to work. I know that in the real world, charity can be a more complicated endeavor, with some people unable or unwilling to become self-sufficient or show generosity in return, but this is a fairy tale. It's aspirational. The story also concludes at Christmas time, which is a season that's meant to be focused on generosity and goodwill to all people. These ideals should be exercised year-round, but, like the shoemaker himself, they benefit from an extra boost at this time of year. The elves and the shoemaker perfectly blends compassion, charity, personal responsibility, and gratitude. The elves show up to help the shoemaker because he needs help. And that's the attitude that we should have toward those in need. Sometimes we're the shoemaker, and sometimes we're the elves. Sometimes it can feel like we're both at the same time. But if someone needs help and you can be an elf, then be an elf. Don't ask questions. Don't expect anything in return. Just help if you can. And when it's your turn to get that help, don't forget to say thank you in whatever way you're able. You've been listening to the Children's Literature Podcast. Please subscribe and give the show a rating. Send comments to letters at childrensliteraturepodcast.com. I'm your host, TQ Townsend. Thanks for listening.